going to continue on with What Remains of Edith Finch. Bon, bon, bon. There we go. Maybe I shouldn't be sitting on that. Those are good. All right. Here we go. Oh, yeah. We were just about to head into the basement. Mosquito, it's flying towards you. Be careful. Mom said the basement was off limits, unless I wanted another tetanus shot. I saw Edie sneak down to the basement once, carrying packages. I thought maybe she was hiding presents. It turned out she was hiding a lot more than that. I remember asking mom once about where Walter had gone. She said after Barbara died, he got as far away as he could. If there's a pattern in all these stories, I think it's that none of us has gotten very far. Goodbye, everyone. I can't believe I've been down here for 30 years. On that first day, after the shaking started, I didn't think I'd survive a week. But after a few days, I settled into a routine. That's what kept me sane. Having a schedule, living for today. I always expect it to be dead tomorrow. But if you wait long enough, you get used to anything. Even a monster on the other side of the door starts to feel normal. Almost friendly. And then one day, everything just 
stop. Whatever that thing was, it was gone. Maybe it got tired of waiting. Or maybe I just got tired of being afraid. It's been a week now, the longest in 30 years. It's a little more than a week. I'm done waiting. I have to leave while well, I still can. Interesting, creepy little hatch door. Books. We definitely don't have enough books in here. I know it's out there, what? somewhere. Whatever killed Barbara. Sorry, down Molly. A lot of peanut butter. And Calvin. I can't hear what you're saying. Maybe this is all a mistake. He's important. But I need to stop living the same day. Even if it kills me. Whatever's out there, I want you to know I'm ready for it. I'm going to appreciate all of it, especially the food. I don't mind if I only have a year left. Or a month. Or a single week. I'd be happy with one more day. I can already imagine the sun on my face. You got hit by a train. Walter died when I was six. I can't believe my mom never told me he was down here. I'm sure my mom was trying to protect me. Maybe she was afraid I'd end up like Walter. But if she never told me about an uncle under the house, I can only imagine what else she was hiding. I don't want to make the same mistakes she made. Trying to bury something that's still alive. Now that there's only one of us left, or maybe two, I thought it was time I heard the stories for myself and found out what happened to everyone else. But now I'm worried the stories themselves might be the problem. Maybe we believed so much in a family curse, we made it real.
I don't know if I should even be writing this. Maybe it'd be better if all this just died with me. But I thought you should know about your family. And the history you're a part of. Honest, I feel as lost as you probably do right now. I think the people in these stories believed them, for what that's worth. And when you look at the house, that history of imagination and stubbornness and madness. Any of it seems possible. been surrounded by death for so long we've just gotten used to it. What kind of family finishes building a cemetery before starting the house? It's embarrassing for me to admit this, but the pet cemetery may be more uncomfortable than the human one. <laughs> Three of the gerbils were mine, and two had been my fault. Oh. Sven built the house, but it was Edie who designed the cemetery. I'm sure Odin's monument had been Edie's idea. My mom was always trying to move on, but for Edie, the past never went away. She could see it poking out of the water at low tide. said she dreamed about the old house every night.
Dee Dee's side was always easier for me to understand. But the older I get, the more I can see where my mom was coming from. Her dad had been pretty strict, but it wasn't enough to save her brothers. She was just trying to do better. She lost two of her brothers, just like I did. I get why she tried so hard to protect us. There's so many things I wish I could ask my mom now. Part of me thinks this is what she wanted all along. For me to come back someday and find everything out for myself. But looking back on it now, if she told me there was going to be so much climbing, I never would have come when I was 22 weeks pregnant. Oh, great. I never met Grandpa Sam, but I think he and my mom had a lot in common. Hmm. They were both pretty intense. Sam spent his life shooting photos, but mom said he got nervous being in front of the camera. I guess we're all afraid of something. What are you doing? Why don't you pick it up? Pick it up. We want to see what's in it. Open it. <laughs> Dawn. I promise, you'll never forget this weekend. Yes, sir. These memories are going to last a lifetime. Mm hmm Am I going to have to shoot anything? It's a hunting trip, Dawn. Shooting is strongly encouraged. Shouldn't we be leaving? Just want to get a shot of you, Dawn. Then we can take off. Not quite. What? Perfect. It's gonna rain the whole weekend, isn't it? Please just take the damn picture. Hey, language. I will never forget this weekend, Dad. That's the spirit. Okay, got it. I'm gonna take some pictures, okay? Just be careful. The camera's older than you are. You're right, Dad. Aww. It's starting to clear up. It's still freezing, though.
supposed to be taking pictures of. Beautiful picture of some water there, yeah. Definitely should not have drunk all that coffee. <laughs> Nothing quite like being outside. Okay. <laughs> Somebody's gonna get crap. Oh, a little more gas in the tank, I guess. Seriously? Hmm. Hold still while I take a Hey! <laughs> <laughs> That's a keeper. I'm just saying, I'm not always going to be here, Don. You'll need to remember this stuff, if you want to survive. I'll be fine, Dad. You know who else thought he was going to be fine? Some guy who died. Don, I'm being serious. I know, Dad. You're always serious. Doesn't being out here make you want to chill out? I'll tell you the truth, I haven't been out here in 20 years. Don, don't you think you could find something more interesting to photograph? You don't need to waste any more film on me, kiddo. Last time I was with my brother Calvin. Man, that was a great trip. Your grandpa Sven taught us how to fish, how to build a fire. We found an old logging trail. There were deer everywhere. I bet if I could remember where that trail was, we'd spot a buck for you in no time. Give me a minute to check the map. Dad! Good eyes, Don. Before you take the shot, let me get a picture of you. Killing a defenseless deer make you feel. <laughs> I just didn't know what that Keep yourself squared up. So elbows down. What? Like I just threw just a random axe out in the middle of nowhere. I'm playing for this I missed what he said. Oh no. He's trying to talk to daughter and to kill him with deer. What if the deer isn't the subject? 
What if it's the tree? <laughs> Lots of pictures here. That's all I do. Great shot, Don. Uh... I'm proud of you, Don. Always remember that, okay? <laughs> Sorry, Don. Just got to reset the timer. Totally normal, Don. Just focus on the camera. Try not to think about. Dad! Oh! Of all these stories, that's the one I wish most that my mom had told me. Instead of hiding from death, Sam seemed to go out of his way to meet it. Be fine. No place at home. After Sam died, my mom and Edie got really close. They'd both lost a lot. Kids have obviously been playing. What are you doing? I totally did not tell her to do that. Get out. Go into the baby's room. Gregory. You must know what happened. Stop it. Stop going. L listen, coward. Go out there. This is your home. You have to go and see what happened. Wow. What a creepy looking baby. Huh. Cute crypto. Dear Kay, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? 
Something funny was happening, but only he could see it. <laughs> I think he saw things the rest of us don't. This is all I can do. I see. On, sweetie. Hello? Sam, I told you I don't want to talk right now. I wonder what he saw. with the ducks. <laughs> ah, I'm being chased. There's a little boy in the tunnel. Go get him. Him. Jumped in the locker in front of me on purpose. He he knows I'm just chasing. Hey, Gregory, look, it's your name. Let's talk again. 
Oh, a ball. We are so after that ball. Let's get it. Come on, Gregory. Gregory? Dude, are you gonna play with me? I'm a frog. Oh, look, look, I'm an adorable little frog. So put it in the laundry basket. Can I flip? Can I, can I do anything? Can I Whoa. Trampoline! Here we go. There is. Just one. Why are all the letters circling around there? Am I supposed to jump up and get I think that's a bad plan. There's baby back up. We should not get the floating letters. Those letters there, they want us to pull on the handle. We're not going to do it because there's a baby in the bathroom. The bathroom is drained. Water is out. Water should stay out. We're not going to do it. Terrible thing to do. Or a good frog. A bad frog. No way. Can I run out of here? What are you doing, frog? You gotta be good. Get away from my hamburger, I Ivy. Die, die. <laughs> I don't think the game no. progress until I uh until I until I do it. I wish he could have told us about the world he saw. There we go. We fixed it. Good frog. Oh no, it's too high, it's too high, it's There's too high! So much I don't understand. About Gregory. About everything. Gregory! To the top. You gotta go to the top. Go up. But I know what happened wasn't before. Gregory, you gotta go up. I'm sure he's happy. That's so messed up. Good luck, Kay. Do you think that's so sad? sad. <laughs> so much fun. little baby with a frog. Strange respect. Hmm. Who was here to ring? I can't imagine my mom ever writing poetry, and yet. A poem for Gus who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard, before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. Father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart.
tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom, were the words that I remember. I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. When the time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign held up his middle finger. The wind picked up, and panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power, but all my father said to this was, Make the music louder! I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone, just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't, until we found you. Hmm. She never talked about him, but mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. <laughs> We need one of these in our house. <laughs> Which one should we go to first? Hmm. I think that's way down. My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. <laughs> At the time, it was as far away as she could get. It's very story rich. Religion was another thing my mom never talked about, but I think it helped her a lot after her dad died. She spent a summer building houses in Calcutta, where she met my dad, Sanjay.
something else. Is that it? Pretty. I'm trying to think that there are any other stories. Be right back, guys. Pause this for a second. I can probably just shot one of the I can just shot one There's one with nothing in it. There's what? I'll take the one with nothing, please. <laughs> right? I don't, what is it doing over there? It appears. I think you gave them their own popcorn bowl. And There's no, like ice in the bottom. Wait, maybe it works for this. But like, I'm gonna say this, but I have this like that in the bowl. It's fine. I'll just have to do this. I 
Oh my gosh. I'm back. Hey guys. Okay, so, so far, first impressions of this game. I love the graphics. They're amazing. And I like how the art is a little bit different for each story that goes by and how each individual uh, character on here has their own unique voice and take on it. Like, um, the art for Barbara's story was completely different than the art for Walter's story. And maybe it's just me noticing this difference, but I mean, it, the art seems to take on the personality of the story that's being told. <laughs> and whether or not they use different artists or if it's just like a really talented artist who can take on different personalities or portray them in their work, it's, I don't know, but it's awesome. Uh, the storyline. I am playing this game instead of editing my own book because I'm addicted to stories. And this is super story rich. Like, look at all the stories we've gone through already. It's, I don't know, it's really good. Um, each one seems to end in tragedy of some kind. And I'm kind of concerned about that. But at the same time, like, I have this bowl of ice cream, and it's going to help me through it, so. I hope you guys have something, like chocolate, or, yeah, chocolate. Mm. If you don't have ice cream, chocolate, or peanut butter, or um, some kind of thing. You know, if you live in New Hampshire, you should really go to Lone Oaks. They're usually closed in the wintertime, but they have the best peanut butter ice cream in the world. I mean, you get that with some of their hot fudge on top, and oh my god, it is like the best thing ever. I miss it. You can't find peanut butter ice cream anywhere. They make their own ice cream, and it is the rarest ice cream I have found. It is so hard to find good peanut butter ice cream. And you'll see people selling, like, Reese's ice cream or something like that, but it's not the same. Low Oaks peanut butter ice cream. They need to sell it everywhere because I miss it. Like, I, I only lived in New Hampshire during the summer growing up, but... It is, it is the best ice cream in the whole world. Low Oaks peanut butter ice cream. Go there if you're not there right now. You, you have to try it. If not now, someday. Until then, I have melted peanut butter on vanilla ice cream to keep me happy and satisfied. It's, it's just for the memory. Because I miss it. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Back to the storyline. Hmm. And my husband loves me and got me my favorite soda. Okay. I almost never drink soda. But I'm like, because, because I drink it, I never buy it. Dear Creaky Attic Boy, stop being creaky. I kind of feel like we missed something in there. Especially because she's not giving me more storyline. It's like a major indicator that I missed something. You are here. What? 
Okay. So I want that door is the hallway. Damn. Why are you showing me this? I can feel like there's gonna be a fire or something now. No messes after that. I'll try to respect others. That is a really old fire extinguisher. Wow. These books has to have a secret passage in it. Says Scooby Doo, yo. Man, I love those gloves. I collect gloves like that, by the way. I have like a whole drawer full of them. I only ever wear them in winter. Okay, what did I miss? Aha! My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born a year later. When my dad died, I don't think mom had nowhere else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. <laughs> and to see kids in the house again. The house had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. This is an amazing. I might have to recreate this in Minecraft or something. I don't know. It would suck because I wouldn't have all the detail. And for a while, things were good, almost normal. But it didn't last. was Milton's 10th birthday, when Edie gave him a castle. After Milton disappeared, the only thing he left behind was a room full of paintings. Let's 
Milton Finch in The Magic Paintbrush. Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. Mom definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room until Mom got him a job at the cannery. Everyone always told me to stay out of Lewis's room, except Lewis. <laughs> smelled very, very familiar. That part of him lived on. Not much better. Just look this way a bit. Go back in. Lewis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died a lot. <laughs> Made of a palace too small for these cats. Oh, nice. Dear Mrs. Finch. As Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. He kept working at the cannery. But he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to... wander. I asked him to describe it. He said he started small. 
imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. Then something moved. Bats. And toads. And things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. But he took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. But he found something more. I worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. Like a whole new Lewis. So I let him go on. I even encouraged There's no way out of this room. It seemed very promising at first. <laughs> he told me he'd made a new friend. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. And songs for them to play. He talked about starting a band. He was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. He no longer spoke at the cannery. But his chopping was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him that all the cheering crowds even the stones under his feet were all in his imagination, so he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor, and he won. They begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. New Louisville. St. Louis. <laughs> he started drifting away from our reality. <laughs> Minneapolis, until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a...
handsome queen. The queen was on her own quest for... Sinister serpents. He followed the sound of her... Silver Harp. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. He knew the world was all in his imagination. But he was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. began to forget the world we know. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. The palace would be packed with his companions. wise Calico who'd insisted on advising him. <laughs>
there's only one thing left to do. Bend down his head. I think you know. <laughs> Mrs. Finch, your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. Hmm. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. On the way back from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I wish we'd stayed. But I understand why we left. Ah, oh, she wouldn't come to the hatch. She didn't know it was there, though. My mom ended up leaving everything behind. What happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe it should have come sooner. Oh, I need that. That's food. comfort food. Know, These are a lot of home. sad, difficult to deal with story. I don't think you know. He doesn't know. We have to forgive him. But no one no, now. No, we're not. day, Edie just watched us pack and didn't say a word. Until supper, when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific- I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, <laughs> you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last... I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. The power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. 
When my mom sailed the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Or that Edie had a key to it. That thing you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories. I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning. Okay. Dear Edith, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled awful. You know, I've seen that house every day of my life. But I never thought I'd go back to it. When the fog rolled in, I lost my way. turned around. I started seeing things. It's his pajamas. <laughs> Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. But when I saw them, they felt like old friends. That night, a lot of things came back to me. Or maybe I came back to them. Things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and- Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it, let go! I kicked and screamed, but Mom dragged me to the car. I never saw Great Grandma Edie again. The next morning, the van came to pick her up, but she was already gone. After that, we moved around a lot. We both tried to make the best of it. <laughs> a few years went by. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. <coughs> the rest happened pretty quickly. She got better for a while. And then she didn't. And then I was alone. The last finch left alive. And 
until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. And appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. This journal was supposed to be for you. But now I hope you'll never see it. I just want to meet you and tell you all these stories myself. But I guess if you're reading this now, things didn't work out that way. This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. when they don't run. <laughs> He's just hiding in the corner. <laughs> he didn't see me. He didn't see me. I'll protect you. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think I might go play some Dead by Daylight now. <laughs> that was an awesome game. All my quests are, are hunter awesome quests. quests. So I was trying to get him out of the way, but you played that. I finished. I played the whole game. I'm pretty you sure finished? I, yeah, I finished the whole thing. Good job. I think I might have missed one person, but the game's over. All the stories are over. I had to play it again to make sure. I might not stream it next time. I just wanted to see that share with you guys. But you guys are awesome. It's not like it's not like a game you can talk through because there's so many stories playing through it. It's just awkward if I start to try to talk. Um, you miss stuff if you do that. I definitely missed something. I just don't know what. Maybe if I watch the credits carefully enough, it'll be here. Like this. This is the thing you missed. It's a really long wall. Why does the wall grow hot? That's so scary. Just um, the crow. They don't know the story behind the movie The Crow. 
it to start on. All these cute little baby pictures and kid pictures. And books. I really like the people's and the locks on the doors. <laughs> If I had to pick a favorite, it would probably be with the little girl turning into the monster. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And all the other different things. That was awesome. You get to be, you get to fly through the air, and then you get to be a cat and a shark. Like, that was pretty cool. Hmm. I also like my cat. I liked all of them. They were awesome. It was really good. The replay a story option is now available. Okay, but let's see, here's, here's no Sven. Where is Sven? Did, is, is she for, for, no. No, there has to be a Sven. Oh my gosh, where's Sven? Or maybe those are just leaves to say, oh yeah, they were married to this person. That's how. But yeah, because Kay's on there too. Hmm. Hmm, so they don't get stories. And they are a curse. Okay. So we're gonna quit the game. Yeah, we're going to quit the game just for now. We'll come back and play later. And that was awesome! Now we gotta go play Dead by Daylight. So I gotta switch some stuff over for that. I will see you guys in a bit. Oh yeah, select all. I'm gonna share those, upload those, upload all of them, because those pictures are awesome. I love those graphics. Okay, ciao!